Well, good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. Hello, teacher. <laughs> we have two different harpsichords right now in the Sequoias, which is probably two more than any other institution has. <laughs> yes. And I found so many people who had never heard of such an instrument, so I decided to do just a little school teaching. Now, obviously, both instruments have keyboards, but the piano has 88. That has been standard since about 1850s. The harpsichord, I haven't even counted them, but it's obviously uh, two-thirds of that. And that's just the way it is. Now, if you want to realize another very significant difference, there's the difference in how the sound is produced. When I play a piano, there is a hammer that strikes the keys, which means, in a sense, it's a percussion instrument. But when you play a note on the keyboard, on the harpsichord, a little gadget inside plucks the string. It's more related to a guitar or various mandolins or even lutes, instruments where the fingers of the player make the sound cluck. So that's, that's quite a difference. Now, you also notice there's a difference in the duration. I'm going to play this as loud as I can. Can you still hear it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It lasts a fair amount of time. Now, when I play here, it's gone. Gone. Is it gone? Oh, yes. Yes. On this instrument, I can play it loud. I can play it very soft. That's, that's why it was originally named what it was, the forte piano, because it could play both loud and soft. Now, this instrument is a very modest scale instrument. There's only one keyboard, and there's no way to change the sound. Well, there is, but not at the moment. <laughs> so the sound is what it is. It wouldn't do any good to press, press it hard. It would probably gum up the works. So you press it just enough. Not too much, because it will sort of... I couldn't describe what happens. But if you play it just right, then it sounds. And that's what's hard about it because the piano player is so used to making it loud, soft, medium. The harpsichord player has to be very controlled. As a matter of fact, it's very similar to the touch of an organ player. Mm -hmm. And that takes a while to learn. It's not impossible, obviously. A lot of us have done it. But it's still, that's the way it is. So I thought the best way to talk to about this program is not really piano versus harpsichord. That was sort of a bad joke. What I mean is piano and harpsichord compare and contrast. So some of the comparisons are obvious, and some of them are a little more subtle. Now, there's one thing a piano has the harpsichord does not have, and you've all seen it, but you might not have thought much about it. For instance, <laughs> now, what makes the sound continue? The pedal, which makes the dampers that would otherwise shut off the sound, let it come on come going. 
and it also means that other strings on the harp on the piano will also vibrate sympathetically so you'll have a much richer louder sound so not only can one note be louder but the whole chord structure can be quite a bit louder with the use of the pedal So what I am going to do is play a piece on one instrument and then on the other. So I'm not stacking the decks. I'm going to go back and forth. So sometimes you'll hear harpsichord first and sometimes piano first. That may not be the way a real person would do it, but that's what I'm doing here. I was thinking of a real harpsichord player because I'm not a real harpsichord player, but I'm trying. So here we go with number one. Glasses are beside the keys. Oh, on the keys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's his first prelude from the Well-Tempered Clavier by J.S. Bach, but you might have heard it as the accompaniment to Ave Maria, yes. because the French composer Uno set himself the task of writing a tune to go with this as its accompaniment. So, so many people have heard it, although they never knew what she called it. Okay, now when I'm going to play it on the harpsichord, I'm going to be playing a modern instrument, and my theory is 
I am playing a modern instrument, and I am playing something that can sound quite mod romantic in my estimation. So I'm not going to try to make it sound like I'm playing the music that would be on the harpsichord, just the way you play it exactly the way you would on the piano. Because I don't get the point. So I'm going to play this in a very romantic style, which means I can get louder and softer and faster and slower and use the pedal and Bach would probably have a fit. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It actually was from a collection called Anna Magdalena's Box Notebook, and the, nobody really knew who the composers were. Well, they figured out, but there are other people that nobody knows today. So this one turned into a pop song, <laughs> believe it or not. So when I play minuet in uh, G major. If it sounds familiar, <laughs> when I'm done playing it on the piano, I'll show you how it sounds in the pop version. I'm sorry, there's the pop version. <laughs>
harpsichord, I'll show you what was made into a popular song like this. turning that into what was known as Lover's Concerto. You may not, you're too young to remember that, but it was 40 years ago, very big. Now I'm going to play it on the harpsichord, which was the way Anna Magdalena Bach would have played it. Was she the oldest of the daughters? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> This next piece is a bourre, which was a Renaissance and Baroque period dance. It nobody sits, nobody starts to dance to this, but the name stuck. And this was the keyboard piece from a larger collection. So it's actually there were two berets in that piece. So this was the second one. So I'll play it first on the harpsichord, as Bach and company would have played it, and then I'll switch and see how romantic I can make it. <laughs>
Here's another beret, which tells you that there is simply a title that can be used for any piece with a certain restrictions about rhythm and uh, how long, the, where the upbeat comes, stuff that you don't need to worry about. This is by, really by Bach, I'd like to get, and it was from a lute suite. That's a kind of a guitar. So when I play it on the piano, that's a really a stretch. On the harpsichord, it's pretty idiomatic. Okay, so here is a piece entitled Bore from the suite in E minor, which is too complicated to explain. <laughs> The next piece that I'm going to play is also from the Anna Magdalena Bach notebook, which, which means that we didn't used to know even who wrote them, but we know it wasn't by Bach. So this is called Musette. A Musette is a very much like a bagpipe composition, and uh, it has also a sort of a kind of a oompa oompa, which makes it really quite attractive.
Because the semester was 15 minutes, was 15 uh, weeks long, you learned one a week, which was quite a pace. Mm. So this was quite a pace for me, and it's called invention. What the interesting thing about it is that you can hear two hands talking to each other. Mm. Invention number one as the closing piece now on the piano the way we did at Indiana University we didn't even have a harpsichord in those days so that shows you how time just changed Thank you. 
I'm not going to ask you which one, which keyboard work won the contest. I don't think there is a way a to figure that out. So, thanks for coming, and it's time to quit. Aww. Thank you.